Hello friends, welcome. Welcome to this presentation from Rising Pearl. I'm your friend, your host Roy. Friends, today we are talking about series 1 where we are discussing real numbers. This is episode number 9 and today's topic is solving number property related questions using fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now friends, in the last webisode, we have taken a detailed look at what do we mean by fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So in a nutshell, what the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states is this. Every composite number can be expressed as product of primes in one and only one unique way if we do not consider the order in which the prime numbers appear. So that is, if we take a composite number x, let's say we take a composite number x, then x can be written as product of primes. So p1, p2, p3, we multiply p1 times p2 times p3, etc. So where each of them, they are actually prime numbers. So we can express every composite number. So for example, we know like 6 is a composite number. So we can write 6 as 2 times 3 where both 2 and 3 are prime. So we can write 6 as this. Similarly, if you take a look at the number 9, we can write 9 as 3 times 3. That is, we can express 9 as product of prime again. right? So something like this, we will probably write this as 3 to the power 2. So similarly, let's say if we have a prime number, a composite number 24, we can write this as 2 times 18, sorry, 2 times 12, right? And then for 12, we can write this as 2 times, so 12, we can write this as 4 times 3. And then 4, we can write it as 2 times 2. So there will be 3, 2. So, so 2 times, 2 times 2. So we will have 2 to the power 3 multiply by 3. So friends, this is something we have seen at length in the last webisode, which is that every single composite number, we can express them as product of prime numbers, right? So let's find out how do we apply this knowledge to solve some of the problems and what kind of problems are we talking about? So the question is, say a number is represented by 4 to the power n, where n is a natural number. Can we say that the number 4n ever end with 0 for any value of n? So friends, uh, read the question one more time. So what the question is saying is, we don't have a number, but we have a format for the number, which is 4 to the power n, and n can have any value. Natural number, we know, is a collection of all the numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, like this, 2, plus infinity. Right? So, n can have any value. So, the question is saying, is there a value of n for which this number will end with 0? That is, so, for example, if n is 1, if n is 1, our number is 4. Right? If n is 2, our number is 4 times 4, which is 16. Right? So, similarly, for n equals 3, we will have 16 fours are 64. So, question is saying, is there a value of n? Remember, n is a collection of natural numbers. It can have any value. So, question is saying, is there a value of n for which this entire number can end with 0? That means, there is, if there is a value of n, I can write 4n as something and it ends with a 0. So, is it possible? That is the question. So, friends, the first thing you can think about is, so, if the number ends with 0, right, so, something like maybe 10 or 20 or 30 or something, right, if you notice if the number ends with 0, what jumps out to us? Well, they are all divisible by 10 or they are all divisible by 5, right, each of these numbers I can divide by 5. And why am I saying 5 and not some other number? And you will get to know that in a moment. Each of the numbers, if they end with 0, they are all divisible by 10. But they are also divisible by 5. Why 5? Because 5 is a prime number. That is why we are interested in 5. So if there is a value of n for which 4n ends with 0, it means that 
that number must be divisible by 5. In other words, this number will have 5 as one of its factor. Right? So, for example, 10, because 10 can be divided by 5, we can write 10 as 2 times 5. Right? So, if a number is divisible by 5, it means a number itself has 5 as one of its factors. So, what we are saying is, for 4n must have a factor 5, right? But, let's take a look at this. 4n is nothing but, we can write 4n as, we can write 4 as 2, to the, 2 times 2 to the power n or we can write this as 2 square power n or this means 2 to the power 2n. And what I did here, here and here is just the basic laws of exponents, right? So, what we see is this is very interesting. So, what we find is for n equal to 1, this value will be 2, n equal to 3, this will be 6. So, it means that the only prime factor that we can see for a number 4n is 2. Because if you take n equal to 1, then my number, my number, like if it is 4 equal to 1, right, my number is 2. If n equal to say 3, my number 3 is 6. So, no matter what the value of n is, I have only 2 as my factor. I do not see 5. And so, we say that 4n can never end with 0 because 5 can never be a prime factor for 4n because the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that 4n can be represented in only one and one unique way in terms of product of its primes. So, if I have found out that 4n can be written as 2 to the power 2n and this means only 2 is the only prime factor, we can never have 5 as a factor for 4n and so it can never end with 0. So, friends, how do we write this question if it comes up in a test? So, we start with our question and then what we say is, let us assume that for some value of n, 4n ends with 0, then 4n will be divisible by 5. So, if we find out the prime factors of 4n, 5 will be one of the factors, right? Because 4n is divisible by 5 clearly means that 5 is a factor, right? But then 4n equals to 2 times 2 to the power n or essentially it means 2 to the power 2n, which means from fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we know that 2 is the only prime factor of 4n for any value of n. And hence, 5 cannot be a factor. So, 4n cannot end with 0 for any value of n. So, friends, we will take a look at one more similar uh, question and I am not going to get into details of how you write it, but I am just going to give you a general idea. So, the question in this case is, is 6 to the power n, where n is a natural number, can this number ever end with 0? So, again, similarly, friends, you can say that 6n can be written as basically 2 times 3, right? 2 times 3 to the power n, which means 2 to the power n multiplied by 3 to the power n. So, again, if 6n can have, if 6n can be written as any number, that ends with 0, that means this number should be divisible by 5, right? That means this number should be, we can, we should be able to express this number as something multiplied by 5 because 5 should be a factor, right? If we get a 0 at the end, that means that this number can be divided by 5 or it means that this number can be expressed as something times 5, where 5 should be one of the factors. But we just saw that 6n has only 2 to the power n and 3 to the power n. 
and fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that this is the only way we can express 6 to the power n. So, if n equals to 5, for example, the factors will be 2 to the power 5 and 3 to the power 5. There is no 5 here. If n equals, if, if n is 10, for example, 6 to the power 10, whatever that number is, that number will be written as 2 to the power 10 times 3 to the power 10. So, 5 will never be a factor. And so, we say that 6 to the power n can never end with 0. So, friends, in the next webisode, we will continue to look at some more applications of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Thanks for watching.